This is Jeff Weiss with the first of two parts of the unit of Biology of Plant Propagation, Unit 4 in the HRT 211 course. And this week, um, I hope you'll take time to augment the uh, information in this lecture by uh, reading the uh, chapter in the text and particularly uh, looking at the uh, videos uh, which provide uh, a, a much uh, deeper introduction to these uh, big ideas that we're going to be talking about in this uh, week's assignment. Um, for practice I'm going to ask you to visualize and apply uh, one of these principles to the practice of horticulture and um, your assignment for this unit will be to construct uh, two Punnett squares that demonstrate the um, idea of Mendelian genetics that we're going to get into a little later in this uh, in this lecture. And we will have a uh, lab uh, for unit four, and we'll I'll give you a sneak preview of what to expect from that. There's a long list of key terms and concepts uh, related to plant biology. Uh, I'm providing a list of just a few of them and the ones that we're going to um, cover, albeit briefly, in this lecture. Upon completion of this unit, um, you should be able to uh, explain the differences between seedlings and clones and their significance for uh, the various types of propagation. Uh, we'll get into the basics of plant taxonomy and the uh, scientific naming system developed by um, Carolus Linnaeus. Um, and we're going to get a very, very basic understanding of plant science, the hows and whys behind plant pr propagation, including uh, a few big ideas that underlie um, everything that we do. Uh, and, and those are uh, genetics, um, various types of cell division, and the applicability of hormones uh, and, and their importance in plant development. And finally, we'll have a brief uh, overview of plant life cycles and how they affect the methods used to propagate them. So um, the first idea is uh, the difference between a um, plant seedling propagated from a seed and a clone uh, propagated through um, genetically identical uh, individuals. So a, a clone is a, a large population of uh, plants or plant parts uh, that arose from a common parent. Uh, but this uh, clone on the right is a aspen clone with, and this can have hundreds or thousands of trees all arising from a, a root sucker from a common parent. And uh, each one of those uh, separate um, trees is called a ramet, um, uh, uh, which is an individual in a clonal colony. So horticulturalists use uh, clones and cloning to create a variety of uh, horticultural products. Uh, and, and clones can be produced using leaves, stems, roots, and other tissues. And each one of those um, clone or ramets uh, is genetically identical to the others, unless they've undergone mutation, of course. And that is a significant difference from seeds and seedling production, where each uh, the genetics of each of those uh, plants is unique uh, and therefore difficult to control. Uh, the significance of this will become clear as we get further into the course. So um, to introduce this idea of plant taxonomy, I'd just like to take a, a quick look through the history of, uh, of plant evolution, uh, starting with the ancestral green algae, which are how all of the plants eventually evolved. Uh, the first uh, uh, break in this uh, uh, genetic 
uh, or evolutionary tree uh, was the uh, development of nonvascular plants. Uh, these are plants uh, that lack the phloem and xylem uh, that allow um, uh, water and nutrients and, and uh, stored uh, food to be moved throughout the plant. And mosses, liverworts, and hornworts had their day in the sun, where they were the dominant plants on Earth. However, they've been largely replaced by vascular plants. And the uh, first important group of vascular plants were the ferns. Um, they had their day. Uh, however, about 300 million years ago, the first seed plants uh, began to evolve. And uh, the gymnosperms, or the conifers, uh, became the dominant uh, uh, plants on Earth during the age of the dinosaurs. And they are still uh, widely represented, uh, but they've uh, lost their dominant place to the flowering plants or the angiosperms. And the angiosperms appeared on the scene about 200 million years ago and uh, have become the dominant uh, plants on our planet uh, in most uh, places. And without a doubt the most important uh, plants for uh, purposes of horticulture. So the um, father of modern plant taxonomy is Carl Linnaeus, or Carol, Carolus Linnaeus, to give him his Latin uh, name. And this sculpture at the Botanic Garden of Chicago is one of my favorite pieces of art in the world. It represents uh, Linnaeus uh, reaching out to study uh, a, a small plant. And he's carrying his collecting bag over his shoulder. and. Uh, um, this man uh, had a, a profound effect on and, and legacy uh, to plant science. He came up with the Latin um, binomial system, the way of describing plants based on their uh, the structure of their flowers, and that taxonomic uh, system has been also adopted for um, animals and all other organisms. So. And it stood the test of time. It's been uh, used now for over 200 years. Um, and it's worth um, including in this course because uh, as horticulturalists and as plant propagators, it will eventually be um, a very good idea to invest in learning um, the uh, scientific names of the plants that you're working with. So what is in a name? Uh, common uh, names are uh, usually easy to remember and they're often descriptive, but they are imprecise and can cause a lot of confusion and misunderstanding. Um, one reason why they can cause misunderstanding is that uh, multiple, um, one common name can be used to describe multiple plants and uh, one plant can have many uh, common names. So uh, a better system was needed, and that was given to us by Linnaeus. And that system uh, has groupings or levels. And, and these groupings have been um, uh, defined originally by the um, uh, flower structure of plants. Uh, however, they've recently been uh, uh, modified and changed, in some cases overthrown, by uh, genetic uh, studies and, and uh, analysis of the genomes of these plants. And uh, uh, each grouping up and down the line here uh, is called a taxon, uh, in plural taxa. So we may be using that term uh, throughout the course, uh, so you should be familiar with it. Now going down from the plant kingdom are a, um, a, a line of different, uh, more specific uh, groupings of plants. Uh, through division, uh, this is where the question of whether the plant has seeds or not is answered. Uh, class, uh, is gymnosperm versus angiosperm, is it a, uh, a naked seed? Uh, or does it have um, a, a fruit with uh, seeds within a fruit, also uh, known as an angiosperm? And then order and family uh, get into more specifics about the 
uh, type of reprodu reproductive structures um, used by that uh, plant. Uh, and finally we get to genus which is the first part of the Latin name and species which is the second part of the Latin name. Uh, that genus and species are the um, uh, name for each distinct plant species and, and a species is a plant that cannot readily uh, interbreed with other species. Going below the level of species, uh, many plant, plants uh, have uh, uh, subspecies where there are characteristics that vary widely and, and, and commonly these are uh, one region to another. So uh, a, a red oak uh, or a yeah, a, a red oak in the uh, grown in the Midwest has different adaptations and features uh, from a red oak in the southeastern U.S. And and um, over time, the the, the differences between uh, these red oaks um, can be characterized as subspecies. And the more widely that these uh, um, plants or these populations of the same plant are scattered over a geographic area, the more likely it is that there are uh, significant and identifiable characteristics that we can group as subspecies. But then there's two more um, uh, groupings and these are varieties and cultivars. Th these are the horticultural uh, variations that have been uh, brought about through selective breeding over um, in some cases with some plants over a long period of time. And uh, uh, varieties and cultivars are uh, uh, not part of this uh, Latin uh, scientific uh, uh, nomenclature but are also important to consider and use, become familiar with, to precisely identify the plant that you're um, desc describing. So here's an example, um, and here's your first scientific name. Uh, this plant uh, is a multiflora rose, and the Latin name for it is Rosa multiflora. I think you can remember that, and now you're off down the road of memorizing uh, thousands of Latin scientific names. But, but multiflora rose is a climbing rose that originated in Eurasia. Uh, it's been uh, bred as an ornamental plant, and this one is uh, Dawson Rose. Um, the, this photo came from a, uh, a woman's garden in Connecticut. She gave me permission to use it for this, um, uh, for this lecture. But Multiflora Rose uh, is uh, uh, also an invasive plant in the Midwest and is taking over and uh, outcompeting many of our uh, native plants in forest preserves and natural areas throughout the Midwest. And one reason why it is out there is because it's been um, planted. It was uh, used by farmers uh, to keep their, uh, it's a thorny rose, uh, it was used by farmers to keep their livestock uh, in a field. Uh, and uh, on their property. However, uh, it escaped the fences where it was planted and occupied farm fields where it basically destroyed them and made them unfit for grazing. Uh, it was also used as an ero erosion control plant uh, to hold uh, soil on steep slopes and to prevent it from eroding away. Well, it's not a very good erosion control plant either. Uh, and it allowed erosion, but it um, this planting further allowed it to escape and and uh, um, and spread. And then finally, uh, for many years, it was used as a, a rootstock for grafted roses. In other words, um, the multiflora rose was the um, the hardy uh, base of the plant and, and used to um, um, support grafts of ornamental roses uh, that were bred for their beauty and, and shape and form and color. Um, and so this um, multiflora rose has been in, um, has been planted for generations and it is still used as an ornamental plant um, as you can see from the photo uh, but it is also overtaken many areas and uh, is a pest plant uh, throughout the Midwest. 
So now I'm going to turn uh, to um, Nope, I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to stop here and pick up uh, the rest of this uh, lecture in part two.